let's use reference angles to find some trig functions. Before we do that, let's recall our two triangles, one with 45 degrees and one with 30 and 60 degrees. Okay, so with 45 degrees, this was an isosceles triangle, so that the two angles that are the same, their opposite sides are the same, so we call those one and one. So then the hypotenuse ended up being square root of two. The second triangle was 30 and 60. I put the 60 down at the bottom. So then we formed an equilateral triangle by reflecting this triangle over to the right. So then the bottom we called two, so that half of that was one. So the hypotenuse is two, and then the opposite is square root of three. Okay, so using these triangles, let's find the exact value using reference angles. For example, let's say I have the sine of 210 degrees. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find the reference angle. So I'm gonna draw this angle where it is. So 210 degrees is in the third quadrant. The reference angle is going to take us back to the x-axis. So half a revolution is 180, so then a little bit more, that's going to be 30 degrees. So that's my reference angle. So I'm going to take this back to the x-axis to form a triangle, right triangle. And then use my 30, 60, 90 triangle to form what the sides are. So the side opposite 30 is 1. So the side opposite 30 in the third quadrant is negative 1. So then the adjacent side of 30 is going to be negative square root of 3. And then the hypotenuse is 2. So from this picture, I can easily find the sine. So the sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so negative 1 half. Let's try another one. Let's say the cosine of 7 pi over 4. Me personally, I like to rewrite that as a mixed number just so I can kind of gauge it a little bit better. So 4 goes into 7 once with 3 left over. Now I know where it is. So 1 pi is half a revolution, so 3 quarters more would be in the fourth quadrant. I'm going to send that back to the x-axis to make a right triangle so I can find the reference angle. Okay, so full revolution is 2 pi. If this is 1 and 3 quarters, then I have a quarter pi left. Pi over 4 is the same thing as 45 degrees. So looking back at the 45 degree triangle, the opposite and the adjacent are 1s. But look at where you are. Opposite is going to be a negative number, so negative 1. Adjacent is going to be positive. Hypotenuse will always be positive. So from my triangle, I can now find those. So the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So 1 over the square root of 2, or square root of 2 over 2. Let's try one more. Let's say we have the tangent of 2 pi over 3. Same idea, draw the angle where it is, so two-thirds of a pi. Pi is half a revolution, so two-thirds of that. Take it back to the x-axis. Okay, so if this is two-thirds of a pi, then I got one-third pi left, so that angle is pi over three, or 60 degrees. So if I look back at my 60-degree triangle, the opposite is square root of three. So the opposite is square root of 3. The adjacent is 1, because it's in the second quadrant, it would be negative 1. Hypotenuse is always positive, 2 in this case. So from my triangle, I can find the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite over adjacent, so negative square root of 3.